Opposites attract. That is one famous principle in life we can learn from magnets. Speaking of magnets, did you know that the word came from the name of the mineral magnetite? It is a mineral first discovered in ancient Greece and is named after the city of Magnesia. But looking at them in a more literal sense, there is still so much to learn about magnets just like the patience and expertise it takes to manufacture them. In today's Lord Gizmo video, we will take a look at how magnetites become magnets and the process in between. First, you need to know where this mineral comes from. Just like most elements and minerals, magnetite is often acquired through the process of iron ore mining methods like open pit and underground mining. Large quantities of magnetite are found in various geological formations like banded iron formations, igneous and metamorphic rocks, and even beach sands. But it is also possible to track small amounts of them through panning in streams or rivers, especially near known deposits. Magnetite-rich sites are studied and prepared for mining. Then, the magnetite-rich rock that they gather will be crushed, processed, and separated from other minerals to obtain pure magnetite concentrates. In order for the magnetite to transform into the desired product, factories need to process them first. One of the ways to do this is through the help of hydrogen steelmaking. This is an emerging technology aiming to decarbonize steel production. From the mining site, the gathered magnetites need to be transferred over to large containers. Given the fact that they need to be transported, they are stored inside shipping containers most of the time. To make the whole process more efficient and faster, they use excavators to scoop up the magnetite-rich rocks. Then huge and strong cranes will transfer these containers to the vessels that will carry them. The processing facility is quite far from the mining site and transporting such heavy loads would be more practical if traveling is done by water. These shipping containers will start journeying to the processing facility for hours or days. Reaching the vicinity of the processing facility, they will be transported from one place to another via train systems or huge vehicles. Now, this is the processing facility that carries the whole manufacturing journey. Thanks to all the development, most, if not all, parts of this factory are assisted by machines and technology. It might feel overwhelming to look at such a wide and big processing facility, but the process the magnetites go through can be explained in a less complicated way. First off, they are carried by this train system where they are crushed and grinded. The raw magnetite ores are first crushed into smaller pieces using jaw crushers, cone crushers or hammer mills. This refines the particles and increases the surface area for separation. It also helps them achieve a consistent particle size distribution. Then they are screened so they can be separated according to their size. During this part, impurities will also be removed. As a result, we are left with different sizes of magnetite that are stockpiled as they wait for the next step. For this application, the facility requires magnetites in its almost powder-like form. So, they go through another wave of crushing and grinding. Usually, the next step of the process is the hydrogen reduction. This is where the prepared magnetite particles are fed into a reactor vessel. Then, they slowly introduce pure hydrogen gas at high temperatures to convert the iron oxide in magnetite to metallic iron releasing water vapor as a byproduct. Once they are in these forms already, a worker will be tasked to weigh each one of them. The magnetites are divided according to their shape and form. Then they will be placed inside a plastic bag to facilitate faster weighing. The worker has to take note of every data that they collect from this step. 
This is essential in making sure that all of the steps in the process goes well. The previous steps would normally result in iron, but these are not done yet. The facility has to make sure that the direct reduced iron, DRI, goes through refining first. The configuration of the refining is totally dependent on the final product requirements. Do not worry, each worker that assists in this facility is trained to do such processes. DRI is melted in an electric arc furnace, EAF, using electricity, producing molten steel with significantly lower carbon emissions compared to traditional methods. During the process that involves the DRI shaft furnace, the workers will slowly introduce the preheated iron ore and hydrogen into the shaft furnace. Hydrogen reacts with the iron oxide in the ore, removing oxygen and forming metallic iron. They may also add specific alloys or elements if they wish to adjust the chemical compositions of the molten metal. Although this facility uses state-of-the-art technology, it is still important to note that trained workers are still there to monitor everything, from the placement of the materials, closing of the furnace, down to the last step. When magnetite is subjected to high temperatures in a furnace, it undergoes a transformation known as oxidation. At elevated temperatures, magnetite reacts with oxygen in the air to form iron oxide compounds. This process results in the conversion of magnetite into different iron oxide phases, depending on the specific conditions of temperature and oxygen availability. One common outcome is the formation of hematite, Fe2O3, which is a reddish-brown iron oxide mineral. This transformation is a crucial step in various industrial processes, including iron and steel production, where magnetite-rich ores are often heated to extract iron. The conversion of magnetite to iron oxide compounds in a furnace plays a significant role in shaping the global iron and steel industry. After that, the workers will slowly open up the chamber. Then they will start collecting these products with a shovel. It is also important to know that they waited for the DRI to cool down first before they even touched it. Protective gear including heat-resistant clothing and face masks, may be required for safety. Once the chamber is cleared of solid materials, any accumulated ash, slag or impurities must be removed from the furnace walls and floor. This can be accomplished through methods such as scraping, vacuuming or using specialised cleaning equipment designed for furnace maintenance. After the physical cleaning is complete, it's essential to inspect the furnace components for any signs of damage or wear. This includes checking the refractory lining for cracks or erosion, inspecting the heating elements for damage, and ensuring that all parts are in proper working condition. To make the transportation easier, they place it on this tool. Every corner of the furnace is checked to make sure nothing is left. Once that is done, another worker will start attaching these harnesses or hooks on the handles of the container. This will help the movement inside the facility faster and more efficiently. The gathered material is checked too, before it even goes through the next step.
That does not end the process of manufacturing magnets. Depending on what application is planned, the magnetite can be processed to transform into a black pigment in paints, cosmetics and other products. It can also be used as fillers for plastics, rubber and other materials. But for this specific application, the powdered magnetite is processed further by melting and shaping it. Thanks to the previous processes, it is now easier to form the magnetite into these thin sheets. The facility only use machines that flatten them. Then they are moved towards a worker tasked to cut them according to the desired size or the sheets. Specific heat treatment cycles refine the material's microstructure and optimize its magnetic properties. In other cases, they cut these sheets into even thinner parts. Strong magnetic fields are applied using electromagnets or other tools to align the atomic structure and create permanent magnets. Coming to this part of the facility, you will see how the workers are moving tirelessly to produce the labels for their packaging. These labels will tell consumers or the market when it was made, the company name and other essential details. Then the prepared magnets are lined up together and measured to make sure they fit the packaging. Speaking of preparation, these magnets will go through another series of steps and processes. Aside from stretching them to the desired length, they will go through finishing and quality control first. The magnets undergo finishing processes like coating or grinding and are inspected for quality and performance. After that, the magnets are expected to transform into what most of us know as the usual magnet shape. The packaging process is also included in this step. The magnets will be processed one by one. To make sure that they are packaged equally, they will go through this machine that divides them perfectly according to the size of the packaging. Then, they will be sealed shut and separated one by one to prepare for a wider market distribution. Remember, magnetite isn't just a cool rock. It's a reminder of the power of science and innovation to shape our world. By understanding and utilizing materials like magnetite responsibly, we can build a cleaner, more sustainable future. So, the next time you encounter something magnetic, take a moment to appreciate the science behind it and maybe even explore ways to use it for good. This has been Lord Gizmo, and we hope you learned a thing or two. Before you leave, please don't forget to show this video some love by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we have new uploads. You can also tell us in the comments section what videos you want us to feature next. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.